welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is celebrating our 20th anniversary of bringing you the Gulf Coast's finest chefs cooking their delicious recipes with natural gas. This show is brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Clean, efficient, natural gas. And now, Coastal Cooking. My guest today is Chef Mike Johnson, Pensacola's premier chocolatier and the owner of Cloud9 Chocolates. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Glad to be back. Tell us what you've got for us today. All righty. So today we are going to do start with a couple of chocolate drinks. Uh, one is going to be a chocolate garnish for some coffee, and the other is going to be some hot cocoa we're going to make. And then after that, we're going to uh, make a cake that has a couple of extra components. One of them will be candied pecans, another one will be white chocolate mousse, and it'll be a warm uh, chocolate cake to be served with the mousse and the, and the candied pecans. Oh, sounds heavenly. All righty, well let's, let's go get, ahead and get going. With our drinks? Yes, so uh, if you wanna make your coffee um, a little spruced up for holidays, birthdays, mm -hmm. a special occasion, uh, it's something that you can do is very simple. Uh, I use our dark bar that we make at Cloud9. It is a blend of Peruvian and Venezuelan dark chocolate with a 69% cacao. So we take a grater. We want to use the large size. We use the medium size. It looks even better. So what we do is we shave the chocolate on the grater. You want to be careful not to Go up and down like that because it will cause heat and will melt your chocolate. Well, now that's a good tip. Yes, you can see the temperature of my hand yes. and how it's melting the chocolate already. And what we're doing here is we're basically doing this like you would uh, salt a margarita, except when you salt a margarita, the uh, glass is just dipped in water. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we've made a simple syrup. Uh, simple syrup means sugar and water. And we cooked it down to make it just a little extra thicker. Okay. What we'll do is we're going to paint the rim of the coffee cup. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rim the coffee cup. Oh, look how special this is going to be. There it is with the grated uh, mm. chocolate. And this is your dark chocolate. This is my dark chocolate. Boy, it's really gotten popular lately, hasn't it? It has because people are aware that it uh, is uh, got a healthier aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Also, it, um, it, it, it fills you up faster. It satiates you faster because it has less sugar. Um, and there's no milk powder in it. So when you eat it, it's very rich, and mm -hmm. you don't need to eat a lot, and your body's telling you, hey, that was great, you know, uh, you don't need to keep eating it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think dark chocolate is there. And plus, uh, over, the, over the last few years, the industry has uh, really gone forward in finding new chocolate varieties and uh, uh, new technology to bring you a much better product and bring me a better product so I can give it to you. Yes. Uh, okay, so there we go. Got a little bit of French press here. You can choose your favorite way to make the coffee. Boy, this is going to be a special cup of coffee today. All right. There <gasps> you go. This. Let's try this. Mmm. Lick all the and without, up. without such a big, without such a big cup, then uh, you can have chocolate with every sip. Yes, <laughs> but that is wonderful, and the chocolate and the coffee are just yeah. And it, you know, it, it really is. It's a great wonderful. presentation. I mean, if you uh, if we had a little smaller one, you know, you could paint it more and get the mm -hmm. chocolate a little bit more down there. And uh, there such you have a it. A good way, way. to uh, decorate your. Uh, coffee cup to make it a little more special. Absolutely, that is delicious. Okay, our next thing. You've got another beverage for me. Yes, is we're going to do a homemade hot chocolate. Mm. Okay, so what we have here is we have some cocoa powder and this is Ankh's cocoa powder. 
It's a, an alkalized cocoa powder, which means they have taken some of the uh, acids out uh, that you would find in some of the bittersweet chocolate. So it's not as bittersweet as a regular cocoa, um, and, but it still has a lot of chocolate flavor to mm. it. So we're gonna put our cocoa powder in the pot and we are going to also take our milk and put it in a little separate pot. Okay. And we're gonna get the milk going and we have some hot water here, okay? And what we're doing is we're gonna bloom the cocoa powder. Okay. So you take the hot water. Is this what blooming means? This is what blooming is. Okay. So what you're doing is you're taking the hot liquid, mm -hmm. usually water, and you mix it with the cocoa powder, okay? And by blooming, it blooms the flavor. Um, just as when you have coffee and you're doing a pour over, you see them add hot water to it and it sits a little bit and then they pour the hot water on it. That, okay. that, uh, hot, that heat allows the initial flavor bloom from things like coffee and even citrus and uh, chocolate, of course. And okay. so the cocoa powder is gonna bloom there. We have our milk going. So I'm also gonna add a pinch of salt that also adds balance and it uh, brings up for a more chocolate punch. Then we have some sugar. Now I'm only gonna add a little bit of sugar to begin with because if it's not sweet enough for you, then you can always add a little bit more. Mm -hmm. you could add different flavors of things to this, couldn't you? Uh, absolutely, peppermint? absolutely. What uh, I would suggest is if you do add any flavors, you would add those at the very end. Okay. Um, if you're going to add rum or if you're going to add um, uh, peppermint or um, any other sort of liqueur, raspberry mm -hmm. liqueur or something, you don't want to add it at the beginning because it will uh, cook the alcohol out and you won't get as, as much flavor okay. as you would just adding it to it at the end. Um, and when you say the end, is it after you've poured it? After in you've the mixed cup? it all up and you're ready to drink it. That's okay. when you would add whatever flavoring that you okay. want to add. That's Unless it was remember. something like cinnamon, right? Or uh, cardamom, where you would put the whole pot in there and mm -hmm. then you could strain it. Okay. And uh, this is a fine instrument to use for uh, straining these things, which I'm going mm -hmm. to use it anyway. I always do with cocoa powder okay. in case there's little tiny bits. You want them strained out and, and so your drink is totally smooth. Mm -hmm. I'll bring our mug over here. So Mike, how long have you been uh, working with chocolates? Well, this is year five for Cloud9 chocolates, mm -hmm. and I um, worked with chocolates a lot at Commander's Palace in Destin, uh, while we were fortunate enough for them to be open. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when um, I decided, you know, this is probably something that I would want to get into. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, artistic opportunity. Yes. You know, I lot of, found a lot of ways to express myself with it. And Pensacola, you know, great town for me to do this in. There's a lot of great products here, mm -hmm. a lot of great people to work with, and uh, our town really appreciates You have done these quite things, well. You know? well. Yes, thank you, you have. Very much. And you have a delicious product. I'm using kind of a big whisk, a little smaller one for mm -hmm. smaller amounts is probably the best. I bet you have a lot of fun creating I do. It's fun All practicing. All your different products because they are really different. I mean, thank you very certainly much. your bacon brittle thank you very much. Yes, is I, one that I fondly remember. Well, that was on the last show, so <laughs> yes. I thought I, I didn't want to duplicate even though it was a while ago. But uh, that is the only non-chocolate thing I do is the bacon brittle. And, so uh, different and unique. And there's, you know, again, a lot of uh, supporters here for, you know, that, for my stuff, Apple Market and City mm -hmm. Grocery and Bodacious Olive and the Hilton. Okay, so I'm adding the milk, whisking away. Okay, we're gonna let this come up. So we're gonna taste it. Kind of see, now look, this is kind of a uh, murky gray, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what it's supposed to be? Uh, yes, because of the black cocoa powder. Other oh, cocoa powders okay. have a more reddish color, so they won't have that look. But when it gets up to temperature, we're going to mount some uh, semi-sweet chocolate in there. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that's going to give it its rich and creaminess, mm. the creamy texture that we want. 
So we're adding two different chocolates. Uh, well, you know what you're doing is we're adding a, a portion of chocolate because this chocolate, when you separate it, you come up with cocoa powder and you come up with cocoa butter. Okay. And um, in the chocolate industry, you use cocoa butter for um, a, a multitude of things, but without the chocolate industry, cocoa butter is used in hand cream, mm -hmm. skin cream, other types of uh, makeup, and um, other types of, of uh, production cooking, like I Oreo see. cookies. Mm -hmm. And that's what the cocoa powder is used for. It wouldn't be used in the makeup or anything, but when you uh, use it for... Um, uh, larger companies will use it. Like I said, anything mm -hmm. you're going to see this very dark cookie, it's got cocoa powder in it. So the chocolate industry uses the premium beans to make the chocolate with. The not so premium beans, they separate into the cocoa powder and cocoa butter. There's and a you lot can't tell learn. the difference between. Yeah, there is a lot. There's a lot out there. Gosh. You know, the, I mean, you know, the thing is uh, with the chocolatiers, we're in competition with um, the large production companies because if they need the chocolate and they're willing to pay for it, then there's Try. less chocolate to be available. But we really mm. haven't had too much of that mm -hmm. to deal with. So let's try. I think we're about ready. Another huh? batch. We are just about ready. Okay, we're gonna add just a touch more sugar. Okay, now you see how the color's changed mm -hmm. and it's gotten a richer, shinier brown color. Yes, it's looking like right, like and that's chocolate. and that's uh, that's the addition of this chocolate, mm -hmm. and that's what gave it its uh, creamier, Beautiful. shinier. Now, if you want to make it even more tasty and richer, then uh, you would use half and half. Okay. You know to step back. Mm. <laughs> Not that I didn't trust you. <laughs> you know what? While I'm enjoying this, we need to take a commercial break. Fantastic. All right, we'll be right back with our other dishes. Stay with us. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer, and you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. The tankless hot water heater is the biggest value that we've seen. Never running out of hot water is great. We had family in town over the holiday, and not one time did we ever run out of hot water. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Did you know that BTU for BTU natural gas can be up to 50% cheaper than electricity? And did you know Pensacola Energy is offering rebates up to $1,000 when you switch from an electric water heater to natural gas? In the end, it's your money. You can put it in your pocket, or you can watch it go down the drain. Contact Pensacola Energy to learn how you can start saving now. Welcome back. We're starting to candy some pecans. That's right. That's uh, the first part of it. So it takes a while for the sugar. So this is it. This is the sugar that's cooked. You can see the heat rising mm -hmm. off of it. You can see it's a dark brown. We're going to add some pecans to this. And then I'm going to use my rubber spatula to make sure all the uh, pecans get coated in all the crevices with the sugar. And also you want to bring the sugar back to temperature because as soon as you put the pecans in, and these are raw, not toasted, so they won't overcook because they are cooking in this mm -hmm. sugar syrup, which is approximately 320 degrees. So during the break, you uh, melted the I put the raw sugar, sugar in here, okay. heated it up on low until it caramelized. If you would okay. give me a little room right here. No, sure. don't touch that. Okay. So this is done. Okay. You can see how Gosh, hot it, it is. Take very long. See how liquidy it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna you're gonna see something in just a minute about how fast this stuff starts to set. So what this is gonna do is we've candied them. It's literally gonna be a crunchy hard candy. 
So we're gonna let this cool here for a minute. And then when it gets where it's not so um, uh, loose, we're gonna put it in the fridge okay. and let it set. Then you can pull it out, crush it up, sprinkle it on. Do whatever you want to with right. it. Right, mm -hmm. what a garnish. Wow. These are uh, Renfro's pecans, mm -hmm. a great local pecan company. Mm -hmm. Our area is blessed with that. Uh, so you should go check them out. And uh, delicious fresh pecans Gosh, for that. Gosh, I can see it already. Right, so it's starting, starting, to, it's starting to set up already. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out a picture real quick. And too, I must uh, tell you that during the break, I had the best hot chocolate I've ever had in my life. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it that. It was to die for. It's wonderful. I think I'm going to try something new here. These are white chocolate chips. This is white chocolate chips. And we are making the white chocolate mousse with these. I'm not even going to clean this off because they go okay. on the same thing. And, and Mike, so all this, this, this is ahead. all going with a, a chocolate cake. This is all going with a chocolate cake. It'll be in our last segment. Okay. Uh, because you just can't have a piece of cake. And it's always good. Some people would call this deconstruction because you're not putting the cake together. We're just having the piece of cake mm -hmm. fresh out of the oven. We're going to bake it so that we serve it warm. Okay. And what we've done here is we're melting the uh, white chocolate. And I'm then going to whip the cream. Now this is a, uh, a bit of a delight. It looks caramelized because we actually do have some of the caramel mm -hmm. that got mixed up in the chocolate. So we're going, I'm going to whip this whipped cream and then we're going to fold the chocolate into it. And that's as simple as it gets for the white chocolate mousse. Now uh, the general ratio, which will be on the recipes they can mm -hmm. get from the website, would be 10 ounces of chocolate to a quart of cream. Okay. And if you would like it to be thicker, you can add more chocolate to it. So I'm you not like, putting you any. Like ripping this by hand. When it's just a small amount, small yes. Amount. Mm -hmm. um, plus, when you're doing the mousse, you do not want to whip it stiff. Mm -hmm. You want to have a soft peak uh, because if you have it whipped stiff and you put the chocolate in, by the time you fold it and everything, it can over whip and break the cream. Okay. Then you've lost your cream and your chocolate. Mm -hmm. Also, I do not add since the chocolate's so sweet. I don't add any sugar into the cream. Okay, all right, as you can see, it's starting to thicken. You can see the trails of the whisk in the uh, cream. It does work better if it's over a bowl of ice or if you've chilled your bowl and your cream a little bit more. Okay. You're getting quite a workout. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, now we're gonna pour this chocolate in there. Mmm, look at this. Chocolate's still a little warm, it's okay. It'll actually cause the uh, cream to start to break. So we're gonna put a little bit of cream in it, whisk it up, fold up rather. Mm -hmm. That kind of tempers it, doesn't it? Yes, it, it reduces the uh, uh, temperature. Okay, so we're gonna whip that together. See how much, see how liquidy it's gone? Mm -hmm. That's okay though, because if it was over whipped and you did that, it would be fat separated and greasy. This, we are now going to set into the refrigerator. Okay. We're also gonna put the pecans in the refrigerator and we'll give you a little idea. Look at Look that. Look at that now. So that is, and you can see where it's still a little bit bendable. Mm -hmm. We're gonna set this into the refrigerator, get it a time to set. Okay. Give that a time to crisp up, and then we will bake the cake, okay. pull out of the fridge and garnish it. So and this we'll is a good go. time to take another break. This would be a great time to take Perfect. another break. Perfect. We'll be right back. Stay with us. 
Natural gas is the clean, reliable, earth-friendly energy choice. Here's what Pensacola Energy customers have to say about using natural gas. We have noticed using the natural gas, our power bills have been a lot lower. Our last home was all electric, and now that we've built this house with natural gas, we won't ever consider going back to electric. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Visit PensacolaEnergy.com and make the switch today. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. You have a choice. Energy that comes from burning dirty coal or energy from a clean natural source. Pensacola Energy Natural Gas. You have a choice. A bulky electric hot water heater that runs out of hot water or a sleek tankless water heater that gives you hot water for as long as you need it. Choose a natural gas tankless water heater and get up to $1,000 in rebates from Pensacola Energy. To learn more, call Pensacola Energy today. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. We are ready to start MJ's Blackout Cake. That's right. It's a very simple cake. Um, you put all the dry ingredients. I forgot these right here, the soda and the salt mm -hmm. and that. We got chocolate. You have cocoa here. powder, flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, baking soda. Okay. So you put all that there. Then you're going to have all your liquid ingredients our eggs, our vanilla, our buttermilk, and coffee. I'll measure that a little bit there. Okay. And we have butter. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to whip that together. Gosh, you've got all your ingredients together. It goes together in no time, yeah, right? All the ingredients in two separate bowls, and mm -hmm. you know, you're good to go. The butter does look chunky. Uh, it could be a little more softened, but it'll still, even when it's softened, you'll see bits of it in there, and that's quite all right. Okay. Now, it's called blackout cake, but look at the color of the batter. Notice the color of the batter. It's a light brown. Mm -hmm. Well, look at that. It's changing color, isn't it? Right, but it will really change color when we cook it. So it'll be a dark chocolate, won't it? It'll be a very, well, blackout mm -hmm. name will be appropriate. Mm -hmm. And this is in a sheet, sheet pan? In a sheet pan, and it has, it's, uh, I spray it, I parchment paper, and spray in flour. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is whenever you're baking, uh, whatever pan you're going to be doing your baking in, Get that ready before you even start gathering your ingredients. Absolutely. Because once you get going, it's the easiest thing to forget. And before you get going, make sure you have all the ingredients. That helps too. <laughs> Any oh, novice yeah. cook will tell you that was probably their first mistake. Okay, so we're gonna tap it a bit. We're gonna come over and put it in the oven. At what temperature, Mike? And due to the magic, 325 degrees for around 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And do the magic of TV. Look at that. And that is Beautiful. why it's called the blackout cake, because it is very dark. Mike, before we cut this, I'm going to give everyone our telephone number. If you would like written copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy, 436-5050. Or you can visit our website at www.coastalcooking.com. So you're going to cut this cake for our serving? You were ready to serve the cake. So um, the pan's a little warm because it just came out of the oven, but you want it to be hot. That's the whole premise of fresh, hot cake. You can cut it into squares. You can cut it into triangles like I have. Okay, now we have some of the mousse. Now this mousse is, uh, you can either let it set to be stiff or you can take it out while it's still a sauce-like consistency. Oh, and 
that's a different sort of texture. Okay. Mm. Any more? Well, we're going to put just a little bit on top, and that way that'll hold some of the uh, praline. Now, tell us about praline. Okay, so praline is a French term, and it is for candied nuts. Um, in the South, we do pralines, mm -hmm. and that is a nut candy that has, traditionally pecans, that has cream in it. And that is why it is softer and creamier mm -hmm. uh, than this. As you can see, we spoke about this, about turning it into crunchy candy. And this is what you can see. So we're going to take this and just pound on a little bit. Boy, this is pretty versatile, isn't it? It's very versatile. This is a great topping for many, many different mm -hmm. things. I mean, think about it. Puddings and ice cream and... Uh, yes. Uh, variety of things and even some savory things if you have something heavy salty you can put a little mm -hmm. spice in this and then have some spice candied pecans oh wouldn't that be good oh yes what a perfect addition to this cake and the cake itself is very versatile. You can just put simple whipped cream on it mm -hmm. and some fresh berries. Mm. Uh, you could choose a dark chocolate mousse. Uh, there's, there's many different things mm -hmm. you can do with it. It's very, very versatile. Great. Well, we need to let all our viewers know about where they can find Cloud Nine chocolates. Well, uh, we have them at Applebee's Market. Applebee's Market. We have them at Apple Market, City Grocery. Bodacious Olive and So Gourmet and the Bodacious Brew. Mm -hmm. The Bodacious Brew, you can buy the truffles individually there. That's the only place in town you can do that. The Hilton on the Beach and Portofino. And all of the Chan's Wine Worlds in the Panhandle. Okay. Of course, they can go to my website. And uh, if you uh, go to the website and you want to order in your local, I can deliver it. And uh, right. we have a Facebook page, so come and check out what we have going on. Mm -hmm. We've got new products coming in all the time and yes. chocolate tastings and... Uh, and things like this to do. Well, I'll tell you, they're marvelous. Well, thank you very Such much. Such a I appreciate delicious it. product. Tell us about your different bars. All righty. Well, as you can see, I've got six different types of chocolate bars. I have three dark bars, and they uh, one is a plain dark bar. The other one has French malt and sea salt. And the third has candied honeybell zest from the Indian River. I have two milk chocolate bars. I use Hawaiian milk chocolate. One is a plain milk chocolate bar. The other one has fresh Florida macadamias from outside of Tampa. And I have a white chocolate bar that uses Renfro pecans, which I'm a big fan of, and Rice Krispies in it. Among that, I also have bacon brittle and uh, about 30 flavors of truffles. And you can go on the website and see which truffles and what their flavors are. Or you can go buy Bodacious Brew and uh, have one with a cup of coffee. And folks, these are not your typical chocolate bars. These are quite gourmet. Well, thank you very much. Very, very special. Well, Mike, you've done a great job. Well, I had a good time. I always have a good time From coming here. From my coffee, my hot chocolate, and now this gorgeous cake with the white mousse. Well, hopefully everybody watching will uh, go ahead and uh, make some cake and yes. make some mousse and some we'll hot chocolate. We'll have the recipe for them. This would be great for it. The holidays are anytime. Anytime. If anytime. it's too hot out there, just turn your air conditioner down. There you go. Then you can have some there hot There you go. Well, thank you again for doing such a great job. Had a great time. Thanks so much. We'll look forward to seeing you next week with more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.